Hey, so in the applications we're going to be developing for our databases, we are going to be taking pictures. We're going to be using the camera and taking pictures. And unfortunately, uh, given the current state of camera support in Android, doing this is a little complicated. It's sort of sort of needlessly complicated, but it's it's sort of complicated. And so I wanted to just spend a little bit of time talking about the problem of how to take pictures. There's a new uh, camera system for the uh, for Android, but it's not stable yet, and um, I did not like it when I tried to use it uh, the last time. And so we're, we're using sort of the the, the the older setup, and and there are just some quirks, and it results in a bunch of code. And so I want you to be aware of what the concepts are because conceptually, it's 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 not that. It's not that difficult. It's just um, expressing those concepts with the uh, abstractions that Android provides. It just gets a little messy. And yeah, and so my, my point is not like this is a great algorithm that you should take for your projects. This is more like problem solving. Like uh, given the fact that we wanted to take pictures, how do we manage to do it? So what, what, what are the issues here? Um, so uh, when we want to take a picture, we are going to start uh, the camera app. And to start the camera app, you know, you have a, a camera intent. And we need the result from, it's, it's an implicit intent, and we're, we're going to need the results from that intent. So in order to start an activity for results, we need an activity. Now, the... Um, app pattern that I like, uh, that I've been um, teaching in this class, and that a bunch of Google engineers also like, is the single activity model. So we have a single activity and a bunch of fragments. So that works really well in a lot of cases. But one case that's a little awkward is when you need to do things in the activity, like start an intent and get a result. So that's that's the, the constraint we're under. So when we start the intent, uh, the camera intent, we need to give the camera a file name. And the reason we need to give the camera a file name is because um, the way Android data sharing works is they try to keep the applications siloed. And so the idea is that my application can read and write data for my application your application can read and write data for your application and sort of never the twain shall meet. Originally, they had a much more lax uh, approach to permissions, which, as you might imagine, did not work out so well in the era of malicious apps. So they tighten this up, and that's a good thing, but it makes it a little more awkward to work with because uh, before we call the camera, we need to create a file name and we need to give the camera permissions on that file name. File name. Okay. The camera then takes the picture and there's a bunch of stuff sort of in the camera uh, app that happens. You know, you can sort of reject a, a picture, you can accept the picture. That's all happens in the camera. And then when the camera is done, it returns to the activity that spawned it, start activity for result does that callback, but it doesn't pass sort of any information about the file. So we need to remember that stuff. And so it's a, it's a little, it's just a little ugly. So it's sort of like, I need to generate this file name. I need to remember this file name in my view model. I then need to start uh, the intent. And then when the intent comes back, I need to, you know, put, put it all together. So this is this workflow, main activity, is going to call start activity for result because it's got to be called from an activity. But the view model is going to choose the file name because we try to put all the, the complicated logic in the view model. So it's not only going to choose the file name, it's also got to remember the file name because uh, when the camera returns, it doesn't tell us what file it wrote. Uh, main activity is going to call view model when the camera finishes because when the camera is done, it's going to call start. Uh, you know, the callback is start activity for result. 
that happens in main activity because that's that's where we started it. And the main activity has to let the view model know, like, hey, remember the this this uh, file name that that you you know written down in one of your local variables. Uh, that file name is now valid. The camera told me it wrote a picture there. All right, so this back and forth. Uh, results in some somewhat ugly code uh, that um, sort of looks complicated, but it's it's just sort of a it's just sort of a workaround in order to get the the picture taking to to work. Um, you know, uh, just just so you know, in the um, in the SQLite version, we're going to be creating local files, and we're going to do that based on a timestamp because that, that's going to allow us to order the files based on their file name. That's kind of a neat trick. When we are generating local files for Firebase, we're going to generate their names randomly. And we do that. Um, UUID is, is something unique identifier. I can't, I, I can't even remember anymore. But it's just a, a long random string. And this allows us to have different clients generate file names independently store them locally, and then store them with the same exact name on the server and guarantee probabilistically that there will be no collision between the names. So taking pictures, it's a, a problem that has to be solved. 